Where are you going to college? A question I'm sure many of us graduating seniors and soon to be seniors have heard time and time again. Whenever I'm asked this question, my answer has always been, I'm not sure yet. Then I get the look. You don't know yet? After this concerned look they have fades from their face, they usually follow up with, well, do you at least know what you want to major in? Again, I say to them, I'm not too sure yet. This conversation definitely contains a degree of judgment because it paints the picture that I'm a lazy student, that I don't value my future education. An estimated 80% of all college students change their major at least one time. Changing your major isn't something that's typically looked down upon. So why is not picking one to begin with typically judged? The biggest issue with this statistic is not that we should know what we want to do before we get into college. It's the stigma that follows the idea of not knowing it. And not knowing something as big as your future career is not something to be ashamed of. Typically when you're given a choice, you're given either option A or option B. Both have pros, both have cons. Taking a longer time to pick between these two options doesn't necessarily mean you're ignorant about what each option has to offer. To me, it shows that you're putting greater thought into it because you care more about the outcomes and how they'll affect you. A word that's been used to describe me time and time again is indecisive. Whether this be because I don't know what restaurant to eat at or what college I want to go to. And this usually isn't said to me in a positive way. The word indecisive has many negative connotations around it, and it shouldn't. You're better off not being able to make up your mind than to let other people make it up for you. Sorry, there's a lot of people here. I'm so nervous. Um, all right. Not knowing is something that should be encouraged, not frowned upon. But not knowing has been ingrained in our society to be negative. What happens when you don't know something on a test? You're penalized. Whether that be your lack of study or just your inability to recall a term on one of your flashcards. You're left with your poor grade, reflecting on how you should have known more. We begin studying for tests rather than studying to actually learn. Not knowing has also instilled fear in students nationwide. Most of the time in the classroom, whenever a teacher will ask a question, how are we expected to answer? Well, we raise our hands. I'm sure we can all relate to the times in the classroom where nobody raises their hand. What follows is an awkward silence, followed by your teacher looking to pick on a victim, and you don't want it to be you. <laughs> you sit there hoping and praying that you don't get randomly called on. So why are we so scared to be called on? I'm sure many of us can agree it's because we're scared of being wrong. We're scared of saying the three simple words of I don't know. We're also scared of our teacher and our classmates thinking that we're dumb, because simply, we don't know the answer. Learning is something that should be, that not, excuse me, that not necessarily should be rewarded, but it certainly shouldn't be discouraged. So imagine you're just a little kid again, and you're learning how to ride a bike. The wind is blowing, the sun is shining brighter than ever before, and the sky is a color blue unlike anything you've ever seen. But you're really nervous because your training wheels are freshly off your bike. The person helping you learn helps you get on the bike and you begin to pedal. And as you begin to pedal, they suddenly let go. And you fall. But you get up and you try again. And again and again. Until finally you manage to stay on. Imagine that feeling when you were finally able to conquer that monstrosity known as a bike. And if you already knew how to do this, you would have never felt that feeling of victory. That feeling of being able to do something you previously didn't know. So learning is pretty cool if you really think about it. And I know as we're approaching the end of the year, the last thing you want to hear is that learning is fun and interesting. But learning how to ride a bike is exciting. Learning more about your friends is exciting. Learning to go through life without knowing what's around the corner is exciting. Throughout my life, there have been so many things that I didn't know would happen. I didn't know that in, third, or that in elementary school, me and my best friend would ever stop being friends. I also didn't know that I would meet some of the most amazing people, especially teachers, here at High Point. Another thing that I didn't know is that in third grade, I would be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. 
On June 6, 2010, I was rushed to the hospital because I felt sick, like really sick. <laughs> and after a few days of being at the hospital, the doctors told me that I had type 1 diabetes. And at first I thought, what the heck is diabetes? <laughs> I didn't know, and being in the hospital for so long was really hard to me. But little did I know the hard part was only bound to come. After being released from the hospital, it was my turn to learn about my body and how to take care of it. And at this point, I really began to hate my body. I didn't understand why my pantries didn't work, but everyone else's did. <laughs> I even started putting it on my Christmas list every single year, a new pancreas. <laughs> so after many years of living with this disease and one more unexpected trip to the ER, I'm proud to say that I've learned so much about my body that I previously wouldn't have known. So we as teens are expected to know so many aspects of our lives at such a young age, when we've barely really experienced life and seen it for what it really is. Our social lives, school, and even work for some of us aren't the only things that we have to be worried about. We also have to worry about figuring out who we are, what makes us, us. And for the longest time, I really struggled with this. I made a promise to myself four years ago that in high school, I would always be 100% me. That I would never be something that I'm not. And throughout my four years here, I feel like I fulfilled that promise for the most part. But I say for the most part, because there's one part of me that I've never fully been myself about. A part of me that for the longest time, I didn't know. And that's the fact that I'm gay. Growing up, I had always struggled with my sexual orientation. I didn't know how my friends and family thought about this topic, and this fear of being rejected absolutely mortified me. I always thought, what would my classmates think of me? What would my friends think of me? And more importantly, what would my family think of me? I didn't know, and I still don't know, whether or not it'll change the way that people treat me. But I turned this small part of me into a secret that began to consume me. I was scared for the longest time of being who I am. I was scared of the way that other people saw me. But I'm done being scared. I'm done feeling like I'm different from everyone else, when in reality, I'm not even all that different. So I never wanted to have a formal coming out, because I didn't want to let being gay be a defining factor of who I am. Because it's not. Because there are so many other aspects to me, like my diabetes or my indecisiveness. <laughs> <laughs> For the longest time, I didn't know who I am. And to be honest, I still don't. But I'm proud to say that I'm no longer afraid to be me. While brainstorming ideas for this TED Talk, I knew that I could make a 10 minute talk about my diabetes or my indecisiveness. But if I did that, I knew I would leave high school with regret. Regret that I wasn't able to fulfill that promise that I made to myself four years ago that I would always be myself. Four years ago, I never thought I'd be able to admit this basic fact about myself publicly. But now I, I am. Um, so not knowing covers an incredibly wide range of topics, from learning how to ride a bike, to college, to your self-identity. Regardless of which one it is, it's okay if you don't know. So next time you ask someone the question, such as, where are you going to college? And their answer just so happens to be, I'm not too sure yet, Hold the judgmental looks, hold the concerned comments, and hold the pressure to make them feel like they should know. There are so many things in life that I don't know, but what I do know is not knowing is perfectly okay. Thank you.